Hi, my name is Mary Zupke, Northwestern Medicine Dietitian, and I'm here at Living Well, and we're talking about uh, quick bites again, and we have another international series for you. So today we're going to talk about some foods that are from Africa and different parts of Africa. And as you probably know, Tunisia is right on the Mediterranean. And we talk about the Mediterranean lifestyle and the Mediterranean diet here at Living Well. More chicken and fish, more fruits and vegetables, whole grains and some dairy, low-fat dairy. So. Um, Africa has the Mediterranean plan. And the first dish that we're going to make is probably something that you've heard of because it is popular in restaurants now. It's called egg shakshuka. And it is very healthy. And um, you see it a lot now in Israel. Um, and that popularity has come over into our restaurants. But it actually originated in Tunisia. So the, the term shakshuka is Arabic, and it means mixture. And so a lot of times they make it with um, a mixture of tomatoes and peppers, which is what I have here. And they have been cooking down um, for about 15 minutes. But I went ahead and chopped up the peppers. You can use whatever kind of peppers you want. I today used um, yellow and red peppers. And then the recipe calls for a little bit of tomato sauce, which gives you a little bit of that liquid. Now, in Israel, they use this dinner. This has eggs in it, and they use this for dinner. Whereas here, um, in our restaurants, we're seeing it more for brunch. So you can use it for whichever, whichever you would like. Um, so what you do is you cook the tomatoes, and you would cover that for about 15 minutes, and then take the cover off. And you can see now that it's a little bit thicker. So it's not just um, plain tomatoes. It's a little bit thicker. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make some um, wells in here. So what does that mean? I like to use this tablespoon because it's even though it's liquid, it's going to give you like a little bit of an indentation in the eggs. OK, so what we're going to do is just make a little bit of an indentation. And then we're going to crack the eggs. It's a good idea when you're cracking eggs to crack them on a flat surface. Then you won't have to worry about the eggshell getting into whatever you're making. So I'm going to crack that egg. You always want to be careful, though. So with your, once you have your um, eggs in here, you're going to, we're going to change our gloves just to make sure that we're safe for the rest of our, our cooking recipes. So you're going to just crack those in there. And this is a method of kind of poaching your eggs in the tomato liquid. Oops. So you can see how they kind of sit in there a little bit. And then we're going to put all of our eggs in here. Now, eggs we recommend for heart patients probably about two a week. And eggs are a good source of protein. All right, we're going to change our gloves then for the rest of our cooking. They have about seven grams of protein per egg. And a lot of people choose egg whites. Now, egg whites have about 0.5 grams of fat, whereas the whole egg will maybe have three to four grams of fat. Um, and sometimes it's OK to have the whole egg, because that gives you that satiety of having a little bit of, of um, fat in your breakfast. So um, it's up to you. Uh, certainly, if you're a cardiac patient, you want to go a little bit slower on the eggs. This would feed um, probably three or four people. Um, but eggs are a wonderful source of a lot of good nutrition. All right. So we're going to let those eggs cook a little bit. And we're going to cover them right up so that the eggs, the egg yolk, it's um, nice and cooked. And then the egg whites will not be runny anymore. And this kind of shows you the um, finished product of the egg shakshuka. We topped it with some fresh mint and some fresh parsley. And that's it. You can serve it with some crusty bread that I have right there next to it. And what a, a wonderful low-carb way to eat. 
All right, so our next dish that we're going to be making is the African peanut stew. Peanuts were originally brought into Africa from the Portuguese, and um, they, are, they grow really well in that arid country. So you see that a lot, and we're also seeing that in restaurants now. Um, despite the fact that um, we're seeing a little bit more of an increase in allergies. So if you do have an allergy, you could use sun butter. This recipe does have peanut butter, but you could use sun butter. That would be a good substitute. And then instead of the peanut garnish on top, you could use sunflower seeds. So there's definitely a way to get around it. But today we're going to use, I've already got the um, sweet potatoes and onions in there, and they are... Um, have already been sauteed so that the sweet potatoes are nice and soft. So that's probably five to seven minutes. And then we're going to add our tomatoes. So I'm adding a can of tomatoes and then a little bit of tomato paste. So you can see that going in. And then we're also going to add peanut butter. So the peanut butter I used is um, just all peanuts. There's a little bit of the fat raises to the top, but what you can do is stir that up, put it in the fridge, and then it won't separate. So that's a nice little trick for the peanut butter. All right, so we're gonna add our peanut butter. If you like the crunch, you can use crunchy or you can use smooth. Either one works. And then for our broth, today we're gonna use vegetable broth. So this would be a vegetable, vegetarian alternative, but you could use other types of broth if that's what you have at home. All right, we're gonna add that all in. Now, um, this does have fresh ginger, and I wanted to talk about that while that this is um, cooking a little bit here. I'm gonna stir that around, mix it together a little bit. Fresh ginger um, is so flavorful and it gives a lot of flavor so that we don't have to use as much sodium. So what you want to do, you can use a knife and peel the outside of the ginger off or you can use a carrot peeler and just peel it away real easily. Get, you want to get that brown crusty side off. And then once you do that, you can slice the ginger right off and you can tell it's so fragrant. Oh, it adds so much flavor. So it's a great herb to use with your sweet potatoes and in your soups and any of your stir fries. The, the fresh ginger really adds a good dimension to your dish. So that's how we would chop up that ginger. And we actually added that with the sweet potatoes in the beginning, but I wanted to show you that ginger. The other thing um, I want to show you is kale. This recipe um, also has some, some kale at the, we, that you add at the end. And what we're going to do with the kale is we're going to get the stem out. Now, a lot of times people think kale is too hard, and it's because the stem. But it has so many antioxidants, and it is a delicious grain. And it's perfect in soups because that softens it right up. So what we're going to do is cut this kale stem right out of the middle. All right? So we take that kale stem out, and then once we have this, curly part, we're going to just slice it up in very small slices, very thin. And once you add it to the soup, we add that right to the end and it gets nice and soft. And then you're getting all those antioxidants. How delicious. The other thing you can do with kale is when you're adding it to a salad, you can mix it in a bowl with lemon juice and that cuts the bitterness a little bit. So that's a good way to do it too. So this is cooking. And then I wanted to show you, this is the finished product for our stew. And you can kind of see the um, fresh parsley, but the kale underneath, see how the kale got nice and soft? And then we put fresh parsley as a garnish and our roasted, be our roasted peanuts. Um, and it's ready to go. So that, today we served with brown rice. Um, peanuts are a good plant-based fat. 
So that's awesome. It's part of the Mediterranean plan. And you're pretty much ready to go. All right. Well, thanks so much for joining me today. Have a great day.